We would all like the best possible health care, and the people of Wales will soon be asked for their view on how their services should be changed. I'm Professor Marcus Longley, Director of the Welsh Institute for Health and Social Care at the University of Glamorgan. And we were commissioned by the NHS in Wales to conduct an independent review of the evidence about what makes the best in hospital provision and assessed what the evidence says. This is the first time all this information has been brought together in one place for Wales. Our review presents the overall picture of why the NHS in Wales needs to change. It doesn't offer solutions and it's not about what local health board plans say, it's about what the evidence says in general about changes to the pattern of acute hospital services. It makes the point that those hospitals are only one part of a complex network of provision and that they depend on the services around them. In looking at the evidence, we've been guided by four simple but profound questions. First, what's wrong with our current pattern of hospital services? Second, we've got more staff than ever before, so how is it that some areas don't have enough? Third, is poorer access inevitable if we are to ensure good safety and quality? And finally, what's the case for change in our hospitals? So, what does the evidence say about the best configuration of hospital services for Wales to help us try to find an answer to these questions? What can we reasonably conclude? In our study, safety and quality relates to two key things. First, clinical outcomes, which are the objective measures of success that matter most to patients, such as avoidable death and disability. And secondly, service models, which describe the ways parts of the service are organised, such as types of surgery or stroke care. The answer is that there is more and more evidence which suggests that patients in Wales do not always get the best possible outcomes from their hospital care, and that in some key specialty areas the way services are organised in Wales probably falls well short of what the evidence suggests is the best. Take major trauma, for example. We know that hospitals geared up to deal with such cases can reduce the death rate by up to 50%. Another problem faced by many hospitals right across the UK is the so-called day of the week effect. There are certain days of the week, quite often Sundays, when if you are admitted on those days, your chances of surviving what's wrong with you are lower than on other days of the week. All of this means that the NHS in Wales will need to consider how many different types of hospital it can support if it's to ensure that patients' outcomes will be the best possible in every hospital at all times. We certainly have got more staff than ever before in the NHS in Wales. And yet, there's a real problem in some specialties in some parts of the country. For example, each of the six health boards with acute hospitals has been having severe problems recruiting doctors in accident and emergency, paediatrics and mental health for some time now. There are UK shortages in each of these specialties, so better recruitment campaigns are unlikely to solve the problem. And we make matters worse for ourselves by providing poor training for some of our junior doctors on whom the service relies. We've now reached breaking point in some specialties and junior doctors will be withdrawn from some of these specialties in some hospitals this year. They are simply being spread too thin. Again, Wales is not alone in this, but chronic shortages of key staff are potentially dangerous and certainly unsustainable. If some services are centralised, this could make accessing them harder. Is there anything which can be done about that? There are two cases to be considered here. First, those patients who need emergency care where delays can be serious. And secondly, those much larger numbers who travel to hospital for routine care, often as outpatients. In the first case, emergency care, the crucial issue is often the time it takes to get patients the care they need. 
In the past, this has usually been synonymous with the time it takes to get to hospital. But in the future, with improvements in mobile care, it will often be about taking that care out to the patient. The second case, where patients travel to hospital for routine care, affects many more people. Won't centralisation of some hospital services hit them hard? The centralising of services is almost bound to increase some people's travel times, but a lot can be done to reduce this problem. Reducing the need for hospital care, using new technologies, improving non-emergency transport and access. In summary, centralising services is almost bound to increase some people's travel times, but there is a lot which can be done to mitigate the impact of this. Through this review, two things kept coming up. First, the evidence needs to be thought through in the local setting to work out what it really means. In particular, it must be set in the context of the complex interdependencies which are typical of modern healthcare. And second, health policy is usually about working out acceptable trade-offs between competing objectives, safety and quality, accessibility and cost. The purpose of the review was to provide information to help you make up your own mind about what changes are needed for Wales. Changes that could give us a healthcare system comparable with the best in the world.